To make the greatest comeback is to be wise in matters you weren't wise in before. It is to understand that a change in you is not only necessary, it is imperative. In today's video, we look at the stoic way to make a comeback. And no, we won't tell you how to disappear and transform yourself. That is because there is no good in retreating into yourself when your reason isn't sufficiently developed, which is often the case when you've taken a hit and are feeling it too. You could end up doing more harm to yourself that way. Check out the video at the top right to learn more about that. There's another popular approach to making a comeback, one that seems promising because it makes you use sheer willpower. And because even if you don't make that comeback, you leave with the good feeling that you were able to will yourself into taking action. It is an approach people often adopt when they're feeling low after a setback. When they feel bad enough about themselves to hoodie up and gloomily sit in the corner, stealing themselves before they enter the fray. No, it doesn't work like that. You don't have to feel low. You don't have to feel bad about yourself. You don't have to sit in the corner and man yourself up. It doesn't help. Life's too complicated to solve it with just willpower. You need to put some reason behind it. Now, that would be the stoic approach. And to understand it, you'll have to listen to what the Stoics have to say. You should listen to them, because even though they have a lot to say, they do make sense. And what does the Stoics have to say? We suggest you watch the video till the very end to find that out and pay close attention while you're at it. But just to get you started, the Stoics suggest that to make your comeback, you should stay where you are and perfect your reasoning first. They say it's not about disappearing, it's about coming back to yourself. They maintain firmly that there is no place you can go to think different, be different, become different. That is because you take yourself with you, here, there, anywhere. It's all you. You will only come back stronger if you stay with yourself, stay with your inner self, and think about things the stoic way to act better. You don't need to disappear or disconnect from others in the world. You need to connect better with yourself. And with that, do us a simple free favor by liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you appreciate what we are doing here. Now, about that comeback. You are not a failure. You're not a failure because you can't be a failure. Yes, that's true even when your actions fall short of success. Why? Because failure, as we typically think of it, is about more than just a result. It's a label, a judgment, a belief that defines not just what we did, but who we are. However, according to Stoic philosophy, to consider yourself a failure requires a misunderstanding of the nature of action and outcomes. The Stoics would argue that failing to achieve a goal doesn't make you a failure because failure isn't about the outcome. It's about how you engage with the process. Let's break this down. If you're procrastinating and haven't even started working toward your goals, you haven't failed because you haven't taken any action yet. Your goals are still in the realm of imagination. They exist only in your mind. Without action, there can be no failure because the game hasn't even begun. Now, if you do take action and you pour your energy and focus into your work but still fall short, you might be tempted to think you failed. But what has really failed? Your actions, yes, but not you. How can that be? Because Stoicism teaches us to focus on what's within our control. The results of your efforts, whether you succeed or fall short, are ultimately beyond your control. All you can control is the effort you put in the intentions you hold, and the actions you take. And if you did your best, if your intentions were good, then you've succeeded in what matters most. This is the essence of Stoic wisdom. Success isn't measured by the outcome, but by the virtue with which you approach the task. Now let's get real for a second. Why do we place so much weight on achieving our goals? Why do we feel that failing to hit a target, whether it's a personal project, a career milestone, or even a fitness goal, is such a monumental blow to our well-being? It's not just about the goal itself. Often, it's about something deeper. 
We feel a need to prove ourselves, to avoid the discomfort of mediocrity, to live up to our own expectations or the expectations of others. Maybe you're tired of feeling stuck. Maybe you're holding yourself accountable for not reaching your potential. Or maybe you're driven by a desire to contribute to the common good. Whatever the reason, it's clear you have something valuable in mind. But here's the key. What matters most is not whether you reach your goal, but whether you approach it with reason and virtue. When you act with reason, you are engaging in the process of becoming better. And here's where Stoic philosophy offers a powerful shift in perspective. The mere fact that you are using your reason, that you are making a conscious effort to pursue your goals with integrity, means you're on the right path. You're not procrastinating. You're not indulging in unproductive habits. You're actively working towards something that matters. This alone is enough to discredit any thoughts of being a failure. But there's something deeper at play here. The Stoics remind us that there's a limit to what we can control. You can set your sights on any goal you wish, but you must accept that you can't achieve everything. The world doesn't always cooperate with your plans. And yet, this doesn't mean you shouldn't strive for success. The wise person understands that success is uncertain and they make peace with that uncertainty. They detach from the outcome and focus on what they can control, their effort, their discipline, their ability to keep going. This is where true inner peace comes from, the same peace you think you'll feel when you accomplish your goals. This is what it all comes down to, inner peace. This is why you work, this is why you play, this is why you do what you do whenever you do it, to sit down unbothered because nothing is pending, because you have enough, because you have done enough. Think about it. When have you ever set out to achieve something extraordinary and reached it without setbacks? Have you ever aimed for the stars and hit them on the first try? Chances are you haven't. And that's okay, because stoicism doesn't discourage dreaming big, it encourages it. Dream as big as you want, but know that you will stumble, you will fail along the way. And when you do, don't get stuck focusing on the prototypes that blow up. Focus on building the next one. This is how you make progress, this is how you keep moving forward. But surely, you might say, I need to stop and acknowledge my failure. I need to take it all in before I can move forward. That's understandable. It's important to reflect. But here's where the stoic mindset comes in. Even when your actions fail, when your plans don't work out, that doesn't mean you have failed. Not if your intentions are in the right place, not if you're driven by the common good, and not if you're ready to accept the failure of your action and learn from it. When you keep this perspective, something powerful happens. You don't lose focus. You don't lose ambition. And most importantly, you don't lose your sense of character. And if you don't lose those things, you don't lose anything. This is what Stoicism teaches us. The real measure of success is not whether you achieve your goals, but how you handle the process. Every time you face failure, you're given a chance to come back stronger. Failure isn't the end. It's an opportunity to grow, to learn more about your goals, the challenges in front of you, and most crucially, about yourself. And here's the most important part. The only true failure is giving up. The Stoic understands that setbacks are inevitable, but they keep coming back. They persist, they refine their approach, and they use each failure as a stepping stone toward greater understanding and success. So when your actions fail, don't label yourself a failure. Instead, focus on what you can do next. Keep coming back, because this perseverance, this resilience, is what will ultimately lead you to master yourself. And when you master yourself, you master your life. With a stoic mindset, you are never a failure, because you are focused on virtue, on what you must do next, and what you must do next is to come back stronger because now you know more about your goals, about the difficulty in achieving them, 
and most importantly about yourself. Now, you even know the most important thing of all, that you must keep coming back. Redefine success. You aren't a failure, and no matter what setbacks or challenges you face, you must keep moving forward. But here's the catch. You can't keep pushing ahead without redefining success. If you're still measuring success by the conventional markers of external achievements, wealth or recognition, you're setting yourself up for frustration and disappointment. Why? Because those things, money, status, approval, are beyond your control. They're fleeting, unpredictable, and entirely dependent on forces outside of you. See where this is going? This definition of success makes your comeback much harder than it's supposed to be. And that's because you'd never measure up to society's standards. And so, your comeback, if it's about coming back just to match up to what society deems worth coming back to, you'll never make it. Stoic philosophy urges us to see beyond these external rewards. It teaches us that true success has nothing to do with how the world perceives you or the things you accumulate. Instead, success must be redefined as giving your all to the process itself, focusing on what's within your control and aligning your intentions and actions with virtue. When you shift your focus from the outcome to the process, something remarkable happens. You free yourself from the constant pressure of trying to live up to someone else's standards. You stop worrying about how you're perceived or whether you're keeping up with others. Instead, you get to focus on what truly matters, the quality of your actions, your growth, and your commitment to virtue. This is the heart of the Stoic mindset to pursue excellence, not for the sake of external rewards, but because it's the right thing to do. Think about it. How many people chase after wealth or fame only to find themselves empty when they finally get there? The truth is, if your definition of success is tied to external validation, you'll never feel satisfied. There will always be more money to earn, more recognition to seek more praise to gather. The chase becomes endless, and along the way, you lose your sense of self, your purpose, and your peace of mind. But when you redefine success as staying true to the process, as doing the best you can with what you have in every moment, you gain something far more valuable, clarity of action. Instead of being distracted by what others think, by societal pressures, or by unattainable goals, you become focused on what's right in front of you. Every action becomes an opportunity to practice virtue, to align yourself with reason, and to live in accordance with your highest values. And this is what creates a life free of distractions and inner conflict. No longer are you torn between wanting more and feeling like you're not enough. You no longer feel pulled in different directions, trying to please everyone but yourself. Instead, you move with purpose, because your actions are guided by reason and virtue. You act not out of a desire for approval or rewards, but because doing the right thing is reward enough. This is the kind of clarity that the Stoics strove for, the kind that allows you to stay calm and steady, no matter the outcome. Now, let's be honest, this is not easy. Redefining success is a powerful shift in perspective, and it requires practice. We live in a world that constantly bombards us with messages about what it means to be successful. We are told that success means excess and that it looks like that big house, that fancy job title, and thousands of social media followers. But the Stoics offer a different perspective. Success isn't about any of those things. Success is about living in alignment with your values doing your best, and maintaining your integrity in every situation. When you embrace this understanding of success, you start to view setbacks differently. Failure, in the conventional sense, loses its sting. When your actions don't lead to the result you hope for, you don't see it as a reflection of your worth. Instead, you see it as part of the process. You recognize that you gave it your all, that you acted with integrity, and that you stay true to your principles. And that, in itself, is a victory. 
This is how you make your comeback, not by clinging to external measures of success, but by staying committed to the process. Every time you fall short, you learn something new about yourself, about your goals, about the obstacles in your way. And with every new lesson, you come back stronger. Your focus shifts from achieving a specific outcome to becoming better through the process. And let's not forget, when you redefine success in this way, you also protect your peace of mind. External achievements are fragile. They can be taken away as quickly as they are earned. But when your success is defined by your inner values and your ability to stay true to yourself, no one can take that from you. It's something you carry with you always, in every moment, no matter the circumstances. You create a foundation of inner stability that doesn't crumble when things don't go your way. Marcus Aurelius understood this well when he wrote in his meditations about the importance of focusing on the present moment and the task at hand, rather than getting lost in fantasies of success or fears of failure. For him, success wasn't about ruling an empire. It was about living in accordance with virtue, about doing his duty and staying true to his principles. And that's a lesson we can all take to heart. Success is about how you live your life, how you respond to challenges, and how you show up every day to do your best. So, when the world tells you that success is about accolades or financial gain, remember that Stoicism teaches a deeper truth. Success is about the process, about acting with integrity, and about aligning your actions with your values. When you focus on that, external rewards become secondary. You gain a life of clarity, free from the constant pull of distractions and conflicts, and filled with a sense of purpose and fulfillment that goes far beyond any material achievement. This is your comeback, the ability to rise again, not because you've achieved something tangible, but because you've stayed true to yourself. And in doing so, you become stronger, more resilient and more at peace because you know that real success lies within you and it always has. Don't listen to others. A comeback doesn't happen without hard work, but the wise man of the Stoics doesn't work hard like others. He shuts his ears to the world when it comes to hard work because he understands a fundamental truth, that just like success, no one can truly guide him toward his deepest potential except for himself. At the heart of Stoic philosophy lies the belief that wisdom, purpose and virtue are things that must come from within. When it comes to hard work, the Stoic knows that no amount of external advice, praise or criticism can replace the inner journey of self-discovery. It is up to the individual to discern their own path, their own reason for striving and ultimately their own definition of success. The first step in this journey is to stop caring what others think. Why? because working hard based on the expectations or judgments of others is a sure way to lose sight of what truly matters. Popular opinion, after all, is fickle. It's swayed by trends, cultural norms, and the pursuit of superficial success. Society glorifies external markers like wealth, fame, and status, making it seem as if these are the ultimate goals of life. But the stoic wise man knows better. He understands that when hard work is driven by these goals, it often leads to emptiness, frustration, and burnout. Think about it. How many people exhaust themselves chasing after what society values, only to find that those achievements don't bring them the fulfillment they expected? When your hard work is guided by what others deem important, it lacks the foundation of personal purpose. It becomes a burden rather than a source of meaning. The Stoics warn against this trap. They remind us that true success comes not from external rewards, but from living in alignment with virtue. Hard work, when done in the pursuit of your own purpose, rooted in your own values, becomes an act of integrity rather than toil. Even well-meaning advice from those closest to you, your family, friends or mentors, can lead you astray. 
They may genuinely want what's best for you, but their idea of what's best is often shaped by conventional ideas of success. They might encourage you to chase wealth, power or status, believing that these are the keys to happiness. But the Stoic knows that these things often bring more complications than peace. They lead to a life that looks good on the outside, but feels hollow on the inside. This is one of the crucial insights of Stoic wisdom. Love and care, while deeply valuable, don't always translate to wisdom. Others, even those with the best intentions, can't know what will bring you fulfillment because they can't see inside your mind. They can't feel what you feel. Here's something interesting. Consider yourself an other, too. There's a part of you, conditioned by society, experience and expectations, that can mislead you just as much as the opinions of others. This part of you is attached to what life offers, to what everyone else seems to want. Success, recognition, material comfort. It's that voice in your head telling you to work hard, to follow the script that has been laid out for you. Get your education, land a good job, find a partner, achieve, achieve, achieve. But do you ever stop to ask yourself whether the work you're doing is truly aligned with your deepest desires and values? Or are you just following the steps that they told you to follow? If you're hell-bent on a comeback, are you sure you won't be coming back to disappointment? It's so easy to fall into this trap, isn't it? You work hard because you're told it will lead to success, that it's what you're supposed to do. But is this your purpose or someone else's idea of what your life should look like? The truth is, even those closest to you often don't know the right path for you. They're just as caught up in their own lives, their own struggles as you are. They might not have discovered their purpose yet, let alone be able to guide you toward yours. This is why the Stoics insist that the only true guide is your own reason. No one can get inside your head. No one can feel the pull of your deepest values, your sense of purpose. And without that knowledge, without a clear understanding of why you're working hard, the effort can quickly become tiresome. You can pour yourself into your work, pushing forward day after day, but if you're not aligned with your purpose, that work becomes a burden. It can drain your energy, dull your spirit, and lead you down a path of mediocrity, frustration, or even destruction. And you might just be working yourself to the next disappointment. This is why the stoic approach to hard work is so different from what we often see around us. The Stoic doesn't work hard just to chase after external rewards. He doesn't labor just because society tells him that's the path to success. Instead, he works hard because he has clarity about his purpose. He understands that true fulfillment comes from aligning his actions with virtue, from pursuing goals that matter deeply to him, not because they look good to others, but because they resonate with his inner values. When you work hard for something that aligns with your purpose, you don't feel burdened, you feel energized. The work itself becomes a source of meaning, a way to express your virtue and contribute to something greater than yourself. And even when the work is difficult, even when you face setbacks, it doesn't weigh you down in the same way because you're not doing it for external approval or rewards. You're doing it because it's what you believe in, because it's part of your personal journey toward wisdom and self-realization. You must be deaf to these temptations for working hard to get tempting things, to even time-tested advice, no matter how well-intentioned it may seem, no matter if it does indeed come from the best intentions. So the next time you find yourself overwhelmed by the pressure to work hard when you're making a comeback, take a step back. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I working this hard? Because everyone's doing it? Because everyone's making a comeback? Because I got to show them I'm doing it too? Do I want what they want just because they want it? Am I simply following the crowd? Have I gotten trapped in the winter arc? And if, in the answers, you can find a unique purpose. Trust yourself. 
Trusting yourself is essential, but Stoicism teaches that this self-trust must be earned and carefully cultivated. It's not simply about following every instinct or immediate thought that comes to mind, because as we've discussed, much of what we think is shaped by the opinions of others, by societal conditioning, by expectations that aren't truly our own. When you're trying to make your comeback, it's easy to get caught up in what others think success should look like. Real self-trust is developed through disciplined reflection and a constant examination of your thoughts and beliefs. You have to sift through what's been handed down to you from outside sources, discerning what aligns with virtue and what doesn't. Let's be honest, trusting yourself is not a matter of simply acting on your desires or ambitions, because those desires might still be rooted in external validation. What you want may not even truly be yours. It could be what society, family or culture has told you to want. So, Stoicism advises caution. Yes, you should trust yourself, but you must do so only after you've taken the time to reflect deeply, to question where your beliefs come from, and to ensure that they are grounded in reason, not just assumptions or external influences. This is where self-awareness becomes crucial. You must regularly check in with yourself and ask, sure, I'll make big bucks, but would it distance me from what I have right now? If what I have right now is rooted in reason and benefits everybody I hold dear, why would I want it any other way? Do I not realize this is what everyone wants to come back to, what I have right here with me at this moment? This is where Stoicism's emphasis on virtue becomes central. To develop true self-trust, you must align your actions, goals, and work with virtue. That is, with wisdom, courage, justice, and self-discipline. These are the core Stoic virtues, the guiding principles that help you determine what is truly good in the grand scheme of things. If your actions are aligned with these virtues, then you can trust that you are on the right path. This gives your work meaning because it's no longer just about achieving personal success or fulfilling arbitrary goals. It's about living in a way that benefits both yourself and others. But here's the challenge. Virtue isn't always easy to define in everyday life. It requires constant reflection, a willingness to question not only what you do, but why you do it. Marcus Aurelius said it best in his meditations when he reminded himself to act according to reason and to stay grounded in what is virtuous, not what is popular or easy. Like Marcus, you need to ask yourself if the work you're doing aligns with these higher principles. Are you working just for personal gain or are you striving to contribute to the greater good? Like Marcus, you must remind yourself to use accurate reasoning, to be discerning in everyday matters, to separate right from wrong and virtue from vice. Now let's consider the consequences of pursuing work that is not rooted in virtue. When your actions are driven solely by external motivations, whether that's wealth, recognition or approval from others, you're setting yourself up for internal conflict. You might achieve outward success, but inwardly, you'll feel disconnected from what truly matters. This disconnection leads to distractions as you find yourself chasing after one goal after another, never truly satisfied. Worse yet, this path is filled with unforeseen obstacles because it lacks a solid foundation. Work without virtue becomes tiresome. It becomes a burden because it doesn't serve a higher purpose. It serves only fleeting desires or societal expectations. On the other hand, when your work is aligned with virtue, it provides a sense of focus and drive that is unshakable. You know why you're working, and that clarity allows you to pour yourself into your efforts fully without hesitation. You're no longer working just to tick boxes or to meet some arbitrary standard of success. You're working because it's part of your purpose, part of contributing to something meaningful. This kind of work isn't just fulfilling. It energizes you because it aligns with who you truly are and the values you hold dear.
You must only take up virtuous work and never be indifferent to virtue while doing it. Only what's virtuous, only that which keeps everyone's well-being in mind by employing prudence, will lead to concentrated hard work down the line. For what isn't good for all breeds conflict, which leads to distractions, which may create obstacles you can't work around. This could be now or the future. To be indifferent to virtue is to be indifferent to your own well-being. But there's an important aspect of hard work that you must grasp to sustain this energy. You must understand that. Hard work is nothing. So you know your purpose now, and you root your hard work in virtue. Great, but you still have to do the hard work, right? Now, you can go about it in the normal fashion, revering the effort you put in, feeling good about the toil, the labor. But here's the stoic check. Don't. Yes, don't feel good about it. Don't admire your hard work. Why? Because hard work in itself isn't inherently good or bad. It's neutral just a tool, a force we apply in the world. What truly matters is how we perceive and approach it. This is a core idea in Stoic philosophy. It's not the external circumstances that define our experience, but our internal attitude toward them. We can transform the way we experience hard work simply by changing our perspective. For one person, labor might feel like a burden, something exhausting and dreaded. For another, the exact same work can feel like a noble pursuit, full of purpose and meaning. The reality, the work itself hasn't changed. What changes is our perception of it. This is where Stoicism offers a powerful shift in thinking. If you cultivate the right attitude toward your efforts, hard work becomes more than just labor. It becomes a path to personal growth, a way to overcome adversity, and a means to develop stoic virtues like resilience, wisdom, and self-discipline. This perspective allows you to see hard work not as drudgery, but as sustenance, feeding your character and sharpening your spirit. For those with noble minds, hard work becomes a necessary element of growth. It is as Marcus Aurelius would say, not something to be feared or avoided, but embraced. This is why we should be cautious of those who toil aimlessly, who exhaust themselves in pursuits without purpose or direction. These individuals, no matter how hard they work, find themselves spinning their wheels. Their efforts, though great, lead nowhere, and this kind of aimless toil is self-inflicted suffering. Without a clear intention or noble purpose guiding their actions, they become trapped in a cycle of pointless exertion. Their hard work becomes a heavy burden, offering no fulfillment, only exhaustion and frustration. This is why the Stoics emphasize the importance of intention. Hard work, when driven by noble and honorable goals, whether it's the pursuit of virtue, wisdom, or service to the common good, takes on an entirely different character. It becomes infused with meaning and purpose. The nature of the work transforms, and instead of dragging you down, it lifts you up. You begin to understand that hard work is not just a struggle, it's an opportunity to grow stronger, to develop inner resilience, and to become a better version of yourself. In fact, when obstacles appear, you start to see them not as setbacks, but as necessary challenges, because overcoming them helps you cultivate even more strength and character. This is why the Stoic mindset teaches that the obstacle is the way. When you face a difficulty, your hard work to overcome it isn't seen as suffering. It's an opportunity to rise above, to develop the inner qualities that allow you to thrive in the face of adversity. This is the essence of Stoic teachings. Seneca spoke of hard work not as something to be avoided or even endured, but as something to be embraced. For the Stoic, the real value of hard work lies in the betterment it brings. It's a tool to achieve not just external goals, but inner growth and true happiness. And here's the key. Happiness, according to Stoic philosophy, isn't found in achieving external rewards like wealth or recognition. It comes from within, from knowing that your hard work is aligned with virtue and noble intentions. 
when your efforts are guided by wisdom, courage, justice and self-discipline, the outcome becomes secondary. The fulfillment you feel comes from the process itself, from the understanding that your work is meaningful and serves a greater purpose. This is why hard work, when approached with the right mindset, becomes a blessing, not a burden. What's even more powerful is that when you align yourself with virtuous work, your efforts become admirable to others, not because you're chasing praise, but because you lead by example. This is something Marcus Aurelius emphasized in his meditations, the importance of living a life that others can look up to. When your hard work reflects your commitment to virtue, it naturally inspires others. You become a model of integrity and dedication, not for the sake of recognition, but because living with purpose is the highest form of success. So the value of hard work isn't determined by the labor itself, but by the spirit in which it is undertaken. This is the stoic truth. You should treat hard work as a means to an end, a tool for cultivating virtue and achieving greatness. Not greatness in the eyes of the world, but greatness in terms of your own moral character. When your work is connected to something larger than yourself, when it's driven by noble goals and aligned with what is truly good, it becomes more than just effort. It becomes a path to self-improvement and fulfillment. And this brings us back to the idea of a comeback. When you're faced with setbacks or challenges, when your hard work seems to go unnoticed or unrewarded, remember this. It's not the external result that defines your success. It's the integrity with which you approach the work. If your efforts are guided by virtue, if you stay committed to what is good and just, then your hard work is never wasted. Every obstacle you face, every failure you encounter becomes part of the journey toward becoming a stronger, wiser and more resilient person. By approaching hard work as a means to achieve something greater, you transform its nature. You see it not as a chore or a burden, but as an essential part of your growth. This is the stoic mindset in its purest form. It's not about avoiding struggle or hardship. It's about embracing it, knowing that every effort, every challenge is an opportunity to cultivate virtue and achieve something meaningful. And so, hard work must never be taken up with indifference to the nature and purpose of the work yet it must always be carried out with indifference. When you work hard, don't focus on the outcome. Focus on the purpose behind your effort. Ask yourself, is this work aligned with virtue? Is it helping me become a better version of myself? If the answer is yes, then you are on the right path. And in doing so, you'll find that the hard work itself becomes not just tolerable, but deeply fulfilling you'll begin to see that truly the obstacle is the way. And your comeback isn't about proving anything to others. It's about proving to yourself that you can rise above any challenge, that you can become the person you were meant to be. You versus you. Making a comeback is a battle fought within yourself against the version of you that has lost touch with reason and as a result now considers itself a failure. This version clings to and chases external markers of success. It rejects its unique purpose and tries to find it in what others do. It allows emotions, setbacks or external opinions to cloud its judgment. It worships the hard work it puts in when it should just get on with it. And so, your comeback is indeed a fight against this vulnerable self. It's a fight to reclaim your inner clarity, to reconnect with the deeper understanding that only stoic wisdom can provide. And like any battle worth fighting, it requires preparation, patience, and the humility to recognize that you are always a work in progress. In the stoic sense, making a comeback isn't about flashy victories or regaining lost status. It's about returning to your reason, sharpening it to be as accurate and grounded as the reason practiced by the Stoics. That alone ensures you come back stronger, more resilient, and more in tune with your true self. 
But this process entails a lot of internal work. You're honing your mind, refining your beliefs, and most importantly, learning from your past failures without being consumed by them. To regroup after adversity, the first step is to return to reason. This means stepping back from the emotional weight of failure or setback and taking a rational look at what went wrong. What can you learn from this experience? What was within your control and what wasn't? The Stoics constantly remind us that anger, frustration and disappointment are natural, but they are also distractions. If you stay too focused on these emotions, you lose sight of the real opportunity that adversity offers, the chance to grow and improve. This process of returning to reason isn't about brushing aside your feelings or ignoring the sting of defeat. It's about accepting them and then shifting your focus to what you can actually improve within yourself. Your reaction to setbacks is what defines you in the end, not the setbacks themselves. This is where the concept of amor fati, the stoic idea of loving one's fate, comes into play. Amor fati teaches that rather than resenting misfortune or wishing things had turned out differently, we should embrace everything that happens to us as part of the path. Each challenge, each hardship, is an opportunity to exercise virtue, to grow in wisdom, and to strengthen our character. So, in the stoic idea of a comeback, there's no room for wishing things had gone differently, no space for dwelling on what could have been. You don't look back with bitterness, you don't try to undo the past. Instead, you welcome the setback, not because you enjoy suffering, but because you recognize that adversity is part of life's journey. And it's in adversity that we have the greatest chance to practice courage, patience, and self-control. It's here that you build the inner strength to come back stronger. The stoic approach to a comeback is subtle, almost quiet. It's not about making a dramatic return to external success or proving your worth to the world. It's about steady persistence in the face of challenges. It's about continuing to act in alignment with virtue, no matter the circumstances, no matter the obstacles. The stoic comeback isn't a grand public victory. It's a personal one. It's about finding your footing after you've been knocked down and steadily moving forward with a deeper understanding of yourself and the world around you. This journey involves constant self-reflection, an ongoing examination of your thoughts, actions, and beliefs. The key is to look inward for growth, not outward for validation. The Stoic doesn't care about proving themselves to others. The only person you need to prove yourself to is you. This is why Marcus Aurelius constantly urged himself to act with integrity, even when no one was watching. As you make your comeback, you master your internal responses to the world. You learn to detach from the need for external approval, from the opinions of others, and from the idea that success is defined by what's visible on the outside. Your true victory lies in how you respond to adversity, how you carry yourself in the face of setbacks, and how you continue to act in accordance with virtue, even when things don't go your way. And here's the beautiful part. Every time you come back from a setback, you're a little bit stronger, a little bit wiser. You've honed your reason. You've learned more about yourself and what really matters. Each challenge has refined your character, helping you see more clearly what's within your control and what isn't. And in doing so, you've freed yourself from the emotional turbulence that comes with chasing external success. You've learned to find your peace of mind, not in what happens around you, but in how you handle it. So remember this, your comeback isn't about reclaiming lost status or proving your worth to the world. It's about mastering yourself, your thoughts, your emotions, your actions. It's about becoming stronger, not in the eyes of others, but in your own eyes. It's about using reason to be unshakable, to become undefeatable. Remember, it isn't personal now, it always has been. If you like what we do, 
Feel free to do more by liking and sharing the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, to the community. How you ask? By hitting that like button as a symbol of your commitment to change. By subscribing to join a community where wisdom isn't just shared but lived to help us create powerful stuff. And don't forget to hit the notification bell, the gentle chime of a stoic philosopher, reminding you to return to this space of learning and growth. Each like, each subscription, each notification is a step towards a collective awakening. And if you feel that stirring in your heart a resonance with the words of Marcus Aurelius, Seneca or Epictetus, share this video. That will help us immensely in continuing to create unique and powerful stuff for the community. Everything changes when you truly hear what Stoicism has been telling us all along. Everything gets better. Your self-discipline, your self-control, your temperance, your cultivation of inner peace and resilience, your self-awareness, your equanimity, you practice forgiveness more often. You stop caring what others think. You start to live with a sense of calm, clarity, and purpose. Even the practice of stoic principles of the dichotomy of control, negative visualization, memento mori, amor fati, and the view from above gets easier, and more importantly, effective.